So it's January 6th and um, we're going to head out from uh, Ocean House Marina down to the Charlestown Breachway to check out uh, the staging up of uh, the dredging that's going to be uh, starting uh, this week. Um, this was a maintenance dredging uh, of the Breachway area that is being funded by the town of Charlestown in its entirety. Um, unlike all the other dredging that we've done recently in the last 10, 15 years, it's always been done um, with state matching grants or federal grants. And most of it was all um, done for restoration purposes. One, the first dredging that we did, um, I'm sorry if I have the dates right, but I think it was 2010, was uh, for eelgrass restoration. And that was after a long, long time trying to figure out how we could get dredging done uh, to help combat the influx of sediment into the pond, which was basically burying all the eelgrass beds. Um, it was restricting water flow into the pond. And um, uh, so to get dredging was, was very expensive. And the town alone didn't have the funds. The state wasn't very receptive to giving Little South County, Charlestown, any money to do it. So what we did was uh, we had, back then we had seen, uh, went into Chafee's office one day and I remember I was with Art Gantz and uh, a few other people and uh, an aide said, well, what about um, eelgrass? Do you have any eelgrass? And of course we said, yeah, that's, you know, these, the uh, sand has been smothering them where we had real beautiful eelgrass beds. They were all now uh, completely um, filled in with sediment. He goes, there we go. We've got our we got our uh, avenue of getting dredging done. So that was the first phase. And um, part of that uh, with the South County, uh, South Shore uh, Restoration Project, which was an Army Corps project, part of it was a, a maintenance aspect of it. And that the state agreed to maintain uh, the, the, the uh, dredging to keep their eelgrass beds from getting submerged. And I believe they did one other dredging under that. Then uh, about two or three years ago, we had the marsh restoration. Uh, now this was a totally different um, avenue of money. It came from the Department of Interior, I believe, and the Nature Conservancy. Uh, again, I might be wrong in some of those, but um, it, the Salt Ponds Coalition, uh, Town of Charlestown, very uh, instrumental in getting the grant for a, um, along with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, to get um, a project done to raise the level of the marshes along the South Shore. And this is for resiliency so that we don't have, um, and when we have flooding or a hurricane, that you have your first line of defense is, that, uh, is the beach and these uh, marshes. And with the rising water, rising uh, level of water uh, that we're having in, in our environment, uh, one way is to raise the level of the marshes so that they survive. Um, and that's where this, two years ago, the dredging was done. Well, in that dredging, uh, some of the excess sand was put out on the beach. And personally, I think that uh, it wasn't brought, sent down the beach far enough and it short cycled back into the pond. So within two years, the basin area filled in and it made it, uh, you know, it restricted water flow and it also restricted um, safe boating passage. Um, these ponds are used heavily in the summertime recreationally, whereas there is no dredge money for, for, for boats. There is for um, water quality and marsh restoration, eelgrass restoration. So in the short term, we knew that um, there was a marsh restoration project going on in Kwani this winter and so we thought what better time to match up with the contractor that was in town to get our best available price um, was to put together a project and uh, not having any grant money available the town funded itself uh, 
from a fund that we've created called the Beach and Pond Restoration. It's approximately $150,000 every year we've been putting into this fund, and it's been growing. In fact, it was one of its purposes was to use to match the local funding that's required in a lot of the grants that we've had in the past. Well, those projects went off so well that in some cases they didn't need our, our match. So our fund kept building up. We had over $1.4 million in that uh, fund. 450000 of it went to the, uh, the Kwani project that's going on now. And that essentially, originally it was only going to be two hundred and fifty, but the town um, pushed in another two hundred thousand dollars when um, that project uh, had a, a shortfall in what was estimated and what the actual bids came in. So there was a chance that 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 project wasn't going to happen. So the um, so Kwani got four hundred fifty thousand. This project was bid and came in. The Nineveh project came in at 900,000, uh, roughly 919, I believe. Um, we don't know whether we'll use all that money or not, but um, the town council on December 26th um, authorized the expenditure of that money. Um, and uh, so we're heading out now to look at that project. It's kind of in its infancy, um, obviously. The award was December 26th, but Brennan was able, to, uh, the contractor, Jay, Jay Brennan, was able to mobilize. And uh, they've already got the pipe and some equipment um, at the breach tray right now. So we'll probably see some of that. They're welding the pipe sections together, and then they'll be um, put on the beach so that we can transport the sediment from the basin all the way down to Charlestown Beach. floats here, big flexi float, and those will be joined together. Um, this is a section of the barge you can see here. This is a great contractor, they've done such a good job uh, on the last project. And I'm so glad that we got them back here, both for the Kalani project and, uh, and here in Denver. So you'll see they clamp it together and then this piece spins and heats up the pipe and then it's pressed together when it's molten and it presses together and seals. It's uh, quite an operation but it's probably the most important piece of equipment. The, the pipe that's in the water, they can see it um, when they navigate over it. But this. Um, pipe will then come out of the water right here just like you have it now and it'll go out onto the beach and all the way down to Charlestown Beach. We had to get permission from every property owner along the beach so that we can run the pipe above the high water mark so it doesn't risk uh, uh, of being um, uh, on a storm if there's a storm event that doesn't get washed into the ocean. See here where the, here's the uh, actual breachway and then it opens up in this area is what we call the basin area and the design was so that when the um, sediment came in the large area would slow the water down and drop the sediment out of suspension and collect here well it not mother nature always does strange things so what man designs doesn't always mother nature doesn't follow so um, in years past, the sand did settle in here to the point that where we are driving now would have uh, would have been less than a foot or so. Um, I don't know if you can see that depth finder there. But we're reading 12 over you know, 11 and a half feet of water right here. So as we move into the pond, so this this area has remained. Uh, 
to the uh, to the dredge depth. But as we come in, you're going to see where uh, the sediment has built up and essentially blocked the flow of water coming in the pond. We are experiencing pretty high tide today, so it's it's probably a foot above normal. But now you can see it's two, one, three, one, five, one, eight. And again, this was all dredged to a depth of eight feet uh, two years ago. Now, what they're going to be doing now is that going to help us? Yeah, yeah, this is all going to be dredged where we are right now, this whole section in here. And you can see the waves in that in that recording, and that's that's actually the sand travels in uh, waves and yeah. keeps pushing, and you, you're going to get those ripples, a look of ripples like that. So you can see this is the major area that's going to be dredged through here. With that 12 inch dredge that they're bringing in this time, last time they only used a 10 inch, and I think in quantity they're using an 8 inch. And that's mainly because they're doing that because they don't want too much volume being pumped out into the marsh at any one time so that they can um, control this, the, uh, the dredge spoils that come out. Here, it's, a, it's essentially a volume job. They know what they've got. They've, got, they've dredged this before. They know it's all good sand. It's good uh, nourishment for the beaches. So uh, this will go, came from the beach, will go right back onto the beach. See how there's two channels that, that, the, that nature does. This one over here on this side, you see it'll get real uh, deep here all of a sudden. Right along here at six, seven feet. But if you look just a boat width away, yeah, that's only a see foot it. of water. Right? You can see Not it. even that. Yeah, you can see it. So some of this we think when they dredged inside the pond. Uh, two years ago it created a different flow and then when the water leaves we think it's been cutting into this bank here and depositing out here as well so some of the sand although most of it comes in from the ocean we think some of it is being redistributed uh, as as the um, as the channel finds its own um, natural course Hopefully after this dredging we'll get everything back and it will stabilize and match the, the dredging that was done inside. If you look off to the left here, that's part of the, um, the, the marsh restoration. You can see how the marsh has grown back in here, where all that was uh, two years ago was just barren. It was just all sand. It managed to um, do plantings and uh, and it's come coming back. It's a slow process, but it's uh, it's working out pretty well. So this area is very prolific, especially with striped bass. In the spring, there is a uh, worm hatch that goes on uh, in May and uh, brings anglers from everywhere and fly fishermen that um, will, about just about four o'clock in the afternoon. These uh, sandworms will come up to the surface to spawn, I guess, and uh, it's, it becomes a feeding frenzy for the striped bass. And people come in here with their fly fishing uh, to mimic the, the, the worm, and um, they'll be out here well after dark fishing for them. And then in the fall, of course, we get um, a lot of the bait fish that that um, are, grow up this is a nursery for small fish and when they start to school up they come in to feed on them and you get a lot of big fish coming in after them. As you can see it's this has held its depth quite well and the eelgrass actually flourished it, it uh, naturally they were gonna transplant eelgrass but halfway through the process they noticed that the eelgrass is coming back on its own and they realize all you have to do is provide 
the correct depth. Um, and and, it, and the eelgrass will come back naturally.